If for no other reason you should consider buying the KETS-02, it's this. It will operate off of battery power. You can take your tiny soldering iron portable. What more could you want? PCBWay.com. Don't let the name fool you. This is your one-stop shop for 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, prototype PCBs and PWAs. Whether it's a full production run or simply a prototype of your newly formed idea, head on over and start a quote today. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the HOA Ham Amateur Radio YouTube channel. I'm Bob, Amateur Radio Call Sign KD4BMG. I talk about amateur radio, antenna systems, emergency preparedness, and every once in a while I do reviews on gear that's related. This portable soldering iron is absolutely related to ham radio. We do a lot of soldering. I am interested in this one just because of its size. I go portable operations many times, and this would be a great thing to have in the event of an emergency if I need to make a repair out in the field. I already have a soldering station and rework gun here in my ham radio shack. By rework gun, I mean that um, heat shrink activator, that thing that we use to shrink tubing down on our wires to protect them. It stays there because I don't have a lot of room on my workstation. So this is going to be a tool that I use in the shop when I don't need to do a lot of soldering. I just need to do a small project or I need to take it on the go. Wouldn't it be nice if reviewers just cut to the chase and told you whether or not something was worthwhile and then quickly gave you the answers and the reasons why? Yeah, that would be nice. Okay, this is good gear. You should pick this up if you ever need to do small soldering jobs and you don't want to pull out the large soldering station or you need something portable. This absolutely does the trick. We'll talk about some specifics, but right now it's just these items come with the kit. These items over here are extra. I do have my exhaust fan. I have two different batteries. We'll try this with. I'm of course going to use it with the 65 watt power connector that comes with it. And we're going to use this on a small soldering test kit. It comes with six tips, all different. I have one tip in that I've already installed. It has a twist on cap. It has this tiny, teeny little stand and instruction manual, which you're going to need because there are a lot of features that are on the screen of this little soldering iron. I'm just going to go through a couple of them so you can see how good the screen is and how you navigate with that. And then it comes with this unbelievably flexible and strong USB-C cable. Let's plug it in and do some stuff. I'm zoomed in on the screen so you can see the information for the menu. Once you plug it in and you complete the boot up screen, if you hold down both arrow buttons simultaneously, which you can do with one fat finger, you go right into the menu and then you select through the menu using one of the arrow keys. As soon as you come to something you want to select, you hold down that arrow key for a second voltage selection, for example, and my options are 9, 12, 15, and 20. And once I get to the one I want, hold down the arrow key, it will select and save it, and then hold down the arrow key again, and it will take you back to the beginning. A quick press will initiate the power on cycle, and you'll quickly see uh, how this heats up to the low 600 range. I think I had it set for 610. There's a percentage bar on the bottom that tells you the percentage of completion to full heat up. So it looks like 610, 65, somewhere in that range is where I have it. We're going to uh, go ahead and pull back the screen here and I'm going to get that little kit ready to go. We'll solder a couple of things with the power supply and then with the battery. I'm using a solder kit from learntosolderkits.com. You can get them on Amazon. They're fun to use with uh, appropriate uh, aged grandchildren. Or if you're learning to solder yourself, they're great small little projects. So. While I am relaxed by soldering, I'm pretty sure that you are going to get bored watching me solder this for minute after minute. So let's just jump on over to a shot and you can see the finished product on these six joints and they turn out exactly like we would expect them to. Pretty happy with the outcome here. So far, so good on this soldering iron. You can always press either of the two buttons quickly to move into temperature adjustment mode and you would adjust up or down and then the unit will automatically go to that new temperature setting. And in a few seconds, literally that quickly, you'll be at your new temperature rating. Before I move on to showing how to operate this with battery, I'm taking it up to 780 degrees. 
the maximum setting it appears on this particular portable soldering iron. And I want to solder an SO239 connector. The reason I'm doing this is that these amateur radio connectors are a little bit beefy. I'm one of those people who likes to put the soldering iron on the outside or the underside or the opposite side of the wire, the opposite side of the solder. That way I know when I put my solder on the inside of that opening with my soldering iron on the outside of the connector, if I can melt my solder, I have this hot enough and I'm going to have a good solder joint and that's what we want. This is the right way to solder, in my opinion. Your opinion might vary, but I'm the one making the video. So, looks good, happy with that. Let's go ahead and move on over to the battery. This is a nine volt output battery. And as soon as I plug in the soldering iron, I'm going to see the Kaiwitz logo and a voltage low. It gives me a warning because the voltage was set at 20 on the soldering iron at the last time I used it. And since my battery is nine volts, it recognized that it wasn't sufficient power to the rating. So I'd made that adjustment. It quickly came up to temp and uh, then I'm ready to solder. And once again, I'm having fun here. I'm going to put you to sleep. So let's just cut right to the finished photograph and you'll see using the battery here at nine volts, I had no problem whatsoever achieving the soldering joints here. With the batteries that we have today, you can easily get batteries that'll put out those uh, 20 volt uh, uh, requirements so that you can use this on the go to full power. Stick with me, I'll wrap up my final thoughts quickly. Kaiwitz often offers discount codes either through their website or through Amazon. If there are any, I'll leave them in the description below. This is a game changing piece of gear and the game changer is that you can power this portable tiny soldering iron with a battery. So take it with you on the go. That's the main feature of this. Of course, for me, I'm going to use it in my shack when I have small repairs to do. One complaint and only one not performance related at all. It meets my expectations. Kaiwitz is known for their competitively priced, fully functional gear, and they almost always put a carry case with their awesome gear. No carry case. It's a portable, lightweight, small soldering iron begging to be taken with me on my trips. Where's my case? Other than that, I don't think there's anything else Kaiwitz could do to improve this. I hope you found this useful. I'll talk to you soon, friends. 73.